eco-sustainable oh, forest. I love a good sustainable office. Not as much as I love battery storage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. My name's Robert Lowell, and this is Maddie Moat. Hey. And we've come to this amazing startup incubator space where things get incubated. <laughs> they do. It's also still being built, it's, so we're in construction. It is, it is a building site, yeah. but we've come to see PowerVault. Mm. What do PowerVault do, Maddie? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to go and find out. That's why we're here, to <laughs> find out you. about PowerVault. <laughs> So Joe, PowerVault, I've yes. heard about a lot, but I don't know how it started and, and the idea behind it. Sure. So um, about five years ago, we recognised that there was a revolution happening and people were installing solar panels. It was quite early days back then. Um, and we really thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if people could store that energy in a battery rather than exporting it to the grid? Um, so PowerVault was formed. Five years later, you know, we've installed hundreds of systems and a number of other changes have been happening in the, in the electricity grid. So, for example, smart meters have been rolled out um, to, to people's homes, people looking at using electric vehicles and so on. So really, you know, the main concept of PowerVault was store energy in the home, but also manage it within the home to make the most efficient use of it. Because, uh, I mean, there's other companies that are, you know, installing home batteries. Yes. But yours are slightly different because you're, you, you're, I mean, because of where the, your batteries come from. Absolutely. So since we started the business, we've always been agnostic about where the batteries come from. So we don't mind uh, which battery chemistry we use. But also we've been looking at using, reusing batteries from electric vehicles. Right. So um, about two years ago, we started working with Renault. So what we thought is, why don't we take that battery that's been partially used and then reuse it in a home energy storage system. Right. So, uh, so yeah, we can use recycled batteries. Uh, and we can also use new batteries as well. I think there's a, a significant life after that first life in the car. You know, we can reuse it and, uh, and get more life out of it. The, the thing that I've become aware of, uh, you know, having lived with a battery, is the concept of lots of batteries in one area communicating with each other and yes. sharing power in a way. I mean, yes. is, that, is that something you're considering and working on? A absolutely. So, um, you know, we've been working with UK Power Networks for the last two years right. and we've deployed 65 batteries in the southeast of England. Um, what we've been doing is using our internet cloud is controlling those batteries to help the grid. So as well as helping people reduce costs in their home, we can also synchronise the batteries so that they can help to deliver energy when there's a problem on the grid. And what about, um, you know, sort of, I don't know if I'm going to use the wrong terms, <laughs> forgive an old, an old man, but peer-to-peer -peer trading. I mean, is there a way of doing that or is that something that's being considered? So if there was a community with 20 people with batteries, is that a possibility that you could supply power to, a, to your neighbour effectively? A a absolutely. I mean, we're working in a trial at the moment on peer-to-peer -peer trading um, right. in Hackney, and uh, a number of power vaults uh, are able to communicate with each other so that they can um, share energy between people. Right. Um, and, you know, one of the great things um, you know, as, as the, the power vaults evolved over the years is we've got more and more processing power inside it, so it has got the capacity to do some of those more intelligent things that perhaps, you know, the batteries of, of yesterday wouldn't have been able to do. Right, because I think that's the, that's the thing I realised coming here today was you know when when you you talk about sort of recycling car batteries I imagine a box which you put some batteries in and it's got two wires at the top positive and negative and that's it but you've got some fairly sophisticated electronics in there as well yes ab absolutely I mean uh, the the power vault system comprises you know, the batteries themselves um, a power converter that can take the energy in and out of them and make it suitable for the home but also a really smart processor with lots of power and memory and, and able to communicate with all sorts of different things inside the home right. and also communicate with, with the grid as well. Right. So I'm with Charlie, you are the business development manager. I just wanted to clarify, there are two different offerings of the PowerVault at the moment, is that right? Yes, yeah, so we've just launched our new product, PowerVault 3, and it's designed to take either first-life lithium-ion cells or second-life lithium-ion cells from cars. Okay, so those are the two options, first-life or second-life. Exactly. And second-life really is the, that, that's where you want to go as a company. So the reason we're developing our second-life 
product is that it um, makes a huge impact on product cost um, and we're focused on delivering the, the best value product for customers and obviously if we can reduce cost and increase value by creating new features then that's a really great thing mm -hmm. um, and Second Life um, electric vehicle batteries enable us to do that. So, so previously your customers I'm assuming have very much been uh, adopters of solar panels, um, who are they now? Are you looking to change that up at all? Yeah, so we're still very much selling to people with solar panels, mm -hmm. but we're also starting to partner with energy suppliers okay. and district network operators who can also get value from PowerVault. So importantly, you don't actually have to have solar panels anymore to benefit from the PowerVault 3. Exactly, yeah, so energy suppliers are obviously rolling out smart meters into everyone's homes yes. and have an obligation to do do so by 2020. Mm -hmm. With smart meters they can get really really granular data mm -hmm. on a half hourly basis uh, and they'll therefore be able to supply um, special time of use tariffs to people's homes mm -hmm. and if you install PowerVault 3 alongside that then it can um, optimise and, and um, maximise the, the benefits from storing off-peak energy during those times. So for you that's the future, that actually when you choose an energy supplier, perhaps you might choose one that will also offer you something like the PowerVault 3, or will offer you the PowerVault 3. Exactly, yeah. Because you're going to benefit Absolutely. Uh, from cheaper tariffs. Exactly, yeah. So um, PowerVault 3, we've already got an um, online portal where you can set minute by minute um, what you want it to do, whether it's charging or discharging or only charging. Um, and so it's very easy to integrate with existing smart tariffs mm -hmm. um, because PowerVault 3 can provide value um, from solar shifting, but also storing off-peak electricity via interacting with smart tariffs. Mm -hmm. So we're working with a company called Green Energy UK, who are an uh, energy supplier who launched the, the Tide tariff last year right. in February. And so if you can have power volts in your home that's storing that really, really cheap electricity and then discharging it into the home during peak times, mm -hmm. you're going to make an energy saving. I'm with Doug from Green Energy UK, a CEO, I should say, of Green Energy UK. And um, I guess we should start at the beginning. So when did you first hear about PowerVault? Uh, we were towards PowerVault in about uh, 2016. Yeah. Um, and in 2017, we really started to talk to them because we launched a, a tariff, a time of use tariff called Tide. Tide. All, of our, all of our tariffs have got a water connection because electricity flows like water. And oh, it also right. gave us the opportunity to talk about low tide and high tide. And yeah. PowerVault have uh, a battery that would fit rather nicely with time of use. Mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're looking to put people in control of their energy consumption and so is our tariff. So there's a, a synergy of purpose there. So with this tariff, um, how is your customer going to be benefiting? Well, the, the customer Simply. is in control. Right. So what, the, the thing we talk about most in the energy business, or the media talk about most in the energy business, is price. Mm -hmm. We talk about consumption. There's two ways of reducing your bill. One is to try and find a cheap deal. The other one is not to use as much electricity. Yes. Right? Or to be smart and use it at a different time of day yes. when it's cheaper. So we have a tariff that allows you to choose the time of day that you use the electricity and get a different price during the course of the day. PowerVault uh, are a company with a, a system that can store energy, whether it be from solar panels mm -hmm. or alternatively from night rate electricity when it's cheaper. So if you combine a time of use tariff mm -hmm. with a battery and solar, you can reduce your consumption at expensive times of the day and it effectively puts you in control of your bill. So how is this going to work then, this partnership? Is the idea that someone will come to you, they want to be a Green Energy UK customer, and you'll go, okay, great, if you want to go on that tariff, have you considered also we, yeah. having this installed? Yes, we've had a joint promotion with PowerVault where we, we give people incentives to, to take a battery and, and, and link it up with that particular tariff. I mean, we... We got into the Tide tariff quite simply because smart metering allows you to measure daily, half hourly usage, which means that you can actually look at what your consumption is, find out how much it's costing you and change your habits. Yeah. Now, getting people to change their habits is quite difficult, but there's lots of technology out there that, you know, or EVs are the obvious one where you put your car on the, on the, on the charger and the car decides when it's going to charge because you program it. Dishwashers are the same. Uh, washing machines are the same, you know, tumble dryers are the same. So you can actually move your consumption patterns around the day mm -hmm. if you have an incentive to do so. Mm. If you've got the same rate of electricity all day, 
what's your incentive to put your washing yeah. machine on at 10 o'clock at night or your dishwasher not on at peak time? So do you think that with smart meters, customers, consumers are becoming more aware of their energy usage and therefore because they have that intelligence now, actually they want more control. Are you finding that more and more I think, that's what customers I, want? That, I think that's where we're going to. The smart right. meter programme, it's well documented that it's a bit behind schedule. Smart, the benefits of smart metering are enormous, but they're enormous to the industry, not necessarily this £30 that every consumer <laughs> is going to save that, that everyone's advertising. The issue is that as we become more efficient, as we can levelise demand and levelise consumption, so the industry can pass on those savings. Big question, what does the future look like of energy consumption to well, you? Well, interestingly, the, 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 at the Tide Tariff and Power Vault and things like that will we'll make peak time electricity a thing of the past. Because at the moment, people consume some electricity overnight, it goes up. Mm. The, when we're all at breakfast, then we go to work, then we come home, then people are still working and people are coming home from school and having tea. So that, that's the point at which we get massive consumption. If we can levelise that, if we can have demand side management so that consumers have batteries that they use at peak time, that doesn't cause de high demands on the grid. And it means we don't have to have as many new power stations. It means that we have a base load at night because everyone's consuming nighttime electricity, yeah. but we can almost levelise out the daytime electricity. So we lose the peaks and troughs. The electricity system becomes much easier. We don't have to put as much risk premium into the purchase of energy at certain times of the day. I mean, energy is a dead simple business made difficult by process. But, but we have to trade 48 times a day. Electricity is more perishable than yoghurt. If you've got electricity in one half hourly period and you don't use it, it's gone. You yeah. can't use it. You have to spill it into the market and you get nothing for it. So if we can do that, then we don't have as much risk. So we can pass that on to the consumer in terms of lower pricing. Smart metering is a really good idea. It's not being implemented as well as it might have been. I mean, I, you know, I've been quoted before as saying, if we'd given it to the distribution companies, they could have gone street by street yeah. by street. So the yeah. implementation of the, the Smart Meters programme is tough for all yeah. of us. But the benefits long term are huge yeah. in how the industry will work, how we will manage demand and how we can make sure there are no peaks and troughs so we, we eliminate the risk. But it's going to take some time. So I think, so what I've taken from that really is that Electricity is like yogurt. <laughs> yeah, well, and the it power is. vault's like its fridge. Helps Correct. it last longer. No, but that's exactly. That's, I love that. I'm going to use that. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's perfect. Yeah. We're done. Good. <laughs> so Ben, Renault, mm -hmm. you, you can buy. This is what I know. Yes. And now you'll correct me. You can buy a Renault. And, and you can lease the battery. Yes. Or you can buy a Renault and buy the battery now. But yep. there was a long time when you could you could lease it, and so so what that meant in the long run is Renault owned the batteries. Yes. At briefly, the end of, yeah. At the briefly end of put. Yeah. You can since the end of 2014. Actually, you've been able to buy the vehicle and buy the battery at the same time. We call those our I versions, I for included. Right. And so, yeah, that was something that we've launched again because there are many people who have confidence in the technology and they're quite happy to to uh, to just go ahead and buy the whole thing outright. So then, one of the things that we talked about today is, you know, we're going to they're going to find a use for these batteries at the mm -hmm. end of life. And then I, I can just hear the comments basically. <laughs> When's the end of life after six months? But it was that kind of when the end of life is in a battery. I know it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so yeah. variable. A bit longer than six months. A bit longer than six yeah, months. Yeah, I mean, I think typically you'd probably expect eight to ten years out of a battery. Presumably at that point then they're at about, what, 75-ish percent of their original capacity. Absolutely, so that's, that's what we kind of, that's what we kind of use as our benchmark. Right. So, you know, we're not saying actually we'll take it until it's absolutely useless and you can't go anywhere. We set 75% of right. our benchmark for, for the battery lease product. And yeah. that's the point where customers who have been paying their battery lease can then um, have their battery exchanged so it's repaired or replaced. Um, at any point in the vehicle's life. So right. if, it, if it lasts five years, it'll be done then. If it lasts 20 years, it'll be done then. Because I think that's the fascinating thing mm -hmm. is that 75% that, that of um, 20 kilowatts is still quite a lot of kilowatts. Oh, it is, yeah. You know, yeah. So in fact, from, from the house point of view, it, it makes a, a lot of sense. Oh, completely. And the other thing is that not only is it quite a significant capacity for the battery, actually the kind of usage cycle that the battery will be going through if it's in something like a power vault system will be very different to the kind of usage cycle it'll be going through in the car. You know, in the car, it'll be being charged and then it'll be depleted quite, quite rapidly as you're driving around. It has quite a high drain on it. 
whereas in something like Power Vault, it's charged relatively gradually and it's discharged relatively gradually. So that actually is a very different usage profile. Right. I've seen it described before as sort of like retirement for batteries. Yeah. But then the other thing that made kind of I, I was got really excited about because it's such an obvious use mm -hmm. for the because then I went, oh my God, are there enough? You know, because if this really get, takes yep. off and really a lot of people start to install these. You need a lot of batteries, but I mean, I don't know how, how many Zoe's have been sold worldwide. Well, we're past the uh, we're past the hundred thousand uh, vehicle mark. Right. So you know, for, for our for our electric vehicle range. So you know, we are making some very significant volumes. But if you even think of that, if there's you know hundred thousand Zoe's now mm -hmm. in five, let's say ten years time, that could potentially be a half a million. No, no, am I getting that right? Yeah, half yeah. a million mm -hmm. power volts. Yeah. I mean, if you can get sort of three or four power oh, volts out of one yeah. Zoe, probably quite easily. You know, yes, it's absolutely. a hell of a lot of power volts. Though. Yes, absolutely. So it's, a, you know, the supply of batteries in the future, but exactly as you've said, you know, batteries are still, battery electric cars are still relatively new. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not at that stage. We're not at that stage yet. Yeah. But actually, this is something which is really going to help with the sustainability as we, as we as move as forward. As we To the Power Vault Lab, which is a bit, it's more like a battery storage, storage toy shop, Robert. So um, excited. Tim, tell us a little bit about what you do with Power Vault. So, I'm Chief Technical Officer here at Power Vault, um, very much in charge of new product development. So, very much from concept all the way through to mass production. So, these in front of us here, these are, these are your babies. Yeah, they're my babies. I look after them every day. And uh, yes, we've got two batteries here. One is our, our second life, Renault cells, and there we've got lithium ion cells. So choice of technologies. Oh, so those are new, those are new cells. Those, are, those are new cells. Right. Mm -hmm. And these are cells that have come out of uh, Renault Zoe's. Right. And is that what they're like? Those are the cells there, the individual yes, cells? Yes, this is what it looks like right. inside. And inside that on their own, that's what they look like. Right. Wow. Okay, so once they've come out of a Zoe, what process do they have to go through to end up here? So when they, when they come to us, mm -hmm. we don't know how, uh, what condition they're in. So therefore we grade them and make sure they've got at least 70% of their original capacity left in them. Right. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Do you do that just from <laughs> plugging them it's, in and looking it's, on a it's, laptop? It's very expensive oh, is it? uh, <laughs> test equipment. And uh, yeah, so far we've probably graded about 2,000 cells. Wow, oh, wow. Okay. So it's very labor intensive. All oh, right, so that, only... take, that takes some time to do that yeah. with each one. And then, so what capacities of the, of the different types you do in four, terms of kilowatt four, hours? Four kilowatt hours, and we can scale all the way up to 20. Oh, right. We can go to 40, wow. as we stack units side by side. So we go would, that wouldn't be in one of those, you wouldn't get that in one. No, it's like multiple that. units. So that would be multiple yeah. units. So per unit, we'll probably go to about uh, 12 battery packs. Right. Um, and then we can put another one side by side. Yeah and keep on stacking. So you see, I've got obsessed now. I want 40 kilowatt hours <laughs> no, of storage. The biggest no, possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the biggest possible. <laughs> and what colour would you like? I quite, well, actually, I, I like a want... mixture. I like the green. Yeah, I like yeah. the green. Because yeah. of what's inside. That was one of my favourite Lego colours, the green one. Well, too. also, this is your second life, isn't it? This yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, I know. That, that whole idea is brilliant. If there is a big uptake, which obviously we all hope there is, how do you scale it up? How do you scale so, up? So we have a uh, contract manufacturer, or two contract manufacturers here in the UK, who pull in parts from all around the world and then do the final assembly testing and then ship out to, to warehousing and logistics and out to end customers. Right, uh, so they can, and they, they're, they've got the capability of yep. making thousands of them. Correct, yeah. Right, right. Well, that's all we've got time for. I'd like to thank Power Vault for letting us have a look around their amazing technology. Yeah. So please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Uh, please have a look at the little Patreon link beneath this video. Yeah, and click the bell to be notified every time Fully Charged upload a new video. The bell, I always forget the bell. It's a please thing. Please click the bell. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, if you have been. Thank you for watching.